All right, welcome everyone. This is a um, this is a stream for um, creating a logo from uh, Cape May Sport Fishing. That's a page on Facebook, and part of the um, the process will be hey may sensor. Uh, part of the process is going to be importing the logo into hey NJ Printing. What's up? Uh, importing the logo into uh, Fusion 360, which is pretty easy. It's an Adobe Illustrator logo, and then the other part is modeling it. So it's going to be modeled for a um, a multi-layer model. All right, is my audio okay? It looks like it's okay from what I'm seeing. Testing one, two. All right. Just want to get this um, this feed out here. How's everybody doing tonight? All right, so. We have oh thanks yeah thanks for doing it Noah Joshua uh, for the modeling I'm using fusion 360 it's free if your company that you're using it under uh, you're making a profit of less than a hundred thousand dollars or if you're like a student or whatever you know that it's all fair Right, I'm just trying to see uh, the link for this, and I'm not seeing the link for it. Let's see. We do it. Let's go to my channel. There we go. Thanks for joining, everyone. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, an, an awesome part. Thanks for hitting that like button, too. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm just uh, tweeting this out right now. All right. All right, so we got that. And I type about uh, 60 to 100 words a minute. I've been doing that for quite a bit. All right, let me switch camera now. Everybody see my screen okay? Let me bring up chat on my phone. This has to be a simpler process than <laughs> having to go through all this. Let's see. Bring it up. Turn the volume down. And we got a full crowd in here tonight. All right. So we have a logo. It is the Cape May Sport Fishing logo. Um, Cape May is a town at the southern part of New Jersey. So if you look at New Jersey, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with New Jersey, there's a tip on the very bottom, and that's where Cape May is. And we go down the shore to Wildwood every summer, and we're always in Cape May at least 20 times. All right, so we have the logo. What you have to do is you have to save this logo as an SVG, 
and that's quite simple you just do a save as I already went through this step and you just select let me drag it over here so you can see it and I just select SVG hey Bob thanks for joining all right so then I, I save it as an SVG that process is already done and I come into Fusion 360 and I can do an insert from SVG and I will browse to the logo this is the SVG logo and then we'll have to do some cleanup let's see why didn't it do it okay and maybe I need to sketch first let's see select that that's where I want it to go and we'll do insert SVG Rails to the file. Here we go. So there's the logo. I'll bring the logo close to the origin. And we'll click OK. And there's some cleanup I gotta do, so I'm gonna get rid of all of this right here. Let's see how that works. Because that's going to be too small. Okay, so I'm selecting too much there. So let me click elsewhere. Hey, Barrow Boy. So let me tell you something about this guy, Barrow Boy. Uh, he's in Cumbria, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Barrow Boy. So when I first started on YouTube, he gave me a shout out. And it was the coolest thing. When you're first starting on YouTube, you know, it's like trying to get one one person to subscribe to your channel is a challenge. Well, Barrel Boy, he does a um, a shout out series for a lot of YouTubers, and he goes through all their content and and grabs a little snippet of a couple of their videos, and it's really awesome what he does. He really gives to the community, so I really appreciate what he's done there. And I believe I was episode 8 or 14. I forget which one. So. So where are you at, Mass Sensor? Yeah, he's in uh, Cumbria or North Cumbria. All right, so here's the logo. So there's a couple things we can do here. For one, I want to model, I want this circle to go down, I think we'll go down maybe an eighth of a millimeter, right? So I'm going to rotate this, I'm going to drop this circle down one eighth of a millimeter. And there's something else cool I want to do too. I want to do a lithograph. I'm not going to do it now, but I want to take one of the photos from uh, the Cape May Sport Fishing page, page and do a lithograph and then have that as part of the logo. I think it would just be so cool having light shining behind it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we're going to move this down. Move, copy. That's what I'm choosing here. And um, that's already selected. Yep. Okay. Why isn't it doing anything? Huh. I expect it to let me move it down. Oh, let me do a copy paste. All right, now I can move it down. So I just did a Control C, Control V, and I'm going to go down. Instead of that, we'll go down 0.8. 0.8 right because I don't think it's necessary to do the full one millimeter extrusion and now I'm going to extrude this upward so I'm going to right click in this area here extrude we're going to go up 0 0.8 millimeters there we go. So now I can turn my sketch back on. We can turn the body off. All right. And now we're going to extrude this guy. Now this is the pain in the neck part. All right. Here, here. 
I just gotta select all these areas. Okay, there we go. All right, this we can extrude also 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Upward, right? Oh, so you're picking subjects in school. Okay, so what, uh, you're in um, college or is it um, like what level of college or what level of school? So my son is in an engineering academy. Our, our county here in New Jersey has a, uh, a an institute where they have different academies and the one is engineering. He's in engineering. He gets to pick a couple. Okay. So it sounds similar to what my son has. Um, first off, you have to have an idea of what you want to go for. So I knew I wanted to be an engineer like when I was in, I didn't know what engineering was. I didn't even know what the word was. But I knew I wanted to do that where I got the design stuff. And I knew that when I was in like the fourth or fifth grade, somewhere like that. I was always tinkering with stuff, started programming when I was in the fourth grade. Um, my first computer was the Atari 800XL. So once you know that, then I think everything is easy. All right, there we go. There's the logo. All right, that was quick. That was like, I don't know, what time did I start? How long are we into this? You want to become a structural engineer? Oh, that is awesome. So that that's a, That's definitely... That is really awesome. So is that like a form of civil engineering, I'm guessing? Your main thing is engineering, right? Anything to deal with engineering. Um, but if you have a chance to take something for design, you have to get your artistic side now. So you... What I find is challenging for an engineer is you do so much with the one side of your brain because you're thinking analytically that you're leaving off a lot of the other stuff that you do for design and take something that's like artsy, not necessarily painting, but more like design of spaces, understanding how to design. Now, if you're just structural and you're just dealing with the mechanics of building a building and statics and stuff, you're going to have dynamics too. Um, then you may not deal a lot with design, but I, I still think that having the design, ed, the design might give you an edge. All right, we're ready. So I'm going to save this model. Let's 3D print this guy. And that is the whole model, right? So we will save this as actually, no, let me cancel that. Let me save this first. Facebook okay, fishing logo. This will be 0 0.8 millimeter layers. All right, now we can 3D print this good. Now all this 3D printing is, I'm not actually sending it to a 3D printer. I'm selecting this object, making sure everything is selected. I hit OK, and then I see what this is.
Yeah, that's that's definitely cool. Anything with design, right? So, I mean, structural engineering, you can even get into factory automation work, too. There's so much. But think about when you become an engineer. You are learning how stuff is made, how stuff is put together. You're telling other people how to do it. The biggest thing is you're learning every day on a job, right? And it's a gateway into so many different fields. You know, structural engineering of an airplane, structural engineering of a ship, a, a boat, a car, you know, uh, buildings. So there's a lot of overlap there. All right. So we have that. Now we're going to slicer. So for anybody who doesn't know what 3D printing is, 3D printing is a, what I have is a 3D printer that spits out a little bit of plastic, kind of like the uh, the squeeze cheese, you know, the, like whipped cream or whatever. You hit the button and you can spread cheese on a cracker. Well, this is this little tiny stream of plastic that comes out the end of the extruder. And the, uh, the hole for the extruder is... 0 0.4 millimeters so very tiny all right so i'm gonna save this under loading this file under here is what i meant to say let's see we're gonna rotate i think this is the y-axis negative 90 maybe nope x-axis negative 90. Nope, rotate 180 now. Or maybe I did it right and I can't tell. Why can't I spin this? That doesn't look right. Why? Where's the rest of the stuff at? See so rotate around X axis again. Nope, that is not everything. We're missing stuff. Oh, look at that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything is not selected. All right, so let's do this. Three D print. So that's selected. Uh, yeah. Is everything selected now? Doesn't look like it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be fun. So can I select? Can I do this? I may have to redo the way that I did the body. Yeah, because I'm not able to select. Oh, what fun. Can I do that? I think so. That might be the ticket. Let's see what happens. We'll do this again. And I'm going to save over this file. Come back to here, delete. And we're going to add it again. Let's see, there we go. That's better. Alright, so now we're going to rotate around the x-axis, negative 90, I hope. Nope. Rotate x-axis, 180. There we go. Now we'll arrange, because that'll put it right in the middle. And we'll select it and we'll see what our measurements are. So we're 76, so that's um, that's about 3 inches. So let's make it go about 5 inches. We'll scale this. X-axis will go 170. And then Y-axis 170. And it should be 1.6 millimeters tall, which is what it's saying down the bottom right, so we're good. Right. This is going to take a long time to print. 
Let's see. We can go back to the original. That will take a long time to print because it's so large. Let's see, rotate again, x-axis, 90 degrees. We'll arrange, we'll leave it this size, and I'm going to slice it. Which, let me check what the layers look like now. Alright, so we're good there. We get up to 0.8. Good. Then we go here. Ooh, not good. It's not, it's not printing out to here, is it? I don't see anything going in here. So I do need to make that a little bit larger. And there's a couple things I could do. I could play with that vector some. But I think this just means that I need to increase the size of it. What's up, yo? What's up? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> that was the wife. <laughs> She's saying hello. No, I don't want to change it here. So I'll go back to here. I'm going to scale. So let's uh, go back to 3D. And we'll go back to scaling, which is what I was doing. And let's go with 130 along the X. And we'll do 130 along the Y. Hey, yeah, thanks for stopping in. All right, so we'll arrange. That looks fine. Now let's see if we can slice, and then we'll look at what the slicer is saying. Layers. Still not enough, but it's better. Look, you can see we got a little... Just barely connecting there, and it's not connecting down here, right? So we got to make it connect. We got to bring that down. So we might have to go all the way up to full bed width. So let's scale. Bump it up again. 120. We'll slice and we'll look at the layers. Now the layers is what's yo, what's up? I need a beer now. Yeah, see I'm having trouble right here. Right there. So I think I just need to keep increasing this and I did I just close that? Yes I did. Well, that's a lot of fun. So we'll go uh, 90, and we're 76, but we can go, I'm going to go 200, 200, now I'm only scaling X and Y because I don't want to scale vertically. I want that layer height of 0 0.8 millimeters to to stay and what that means is that'll be four layers high that are that's printed and I want this to take forever and we'll do a slice and we'll take a look at the layers go up to dang it we're so close so close look at that it got further this time so that's the problem if i had a smaller nozzle it would do that but it um
it would take forever. I don't have much more room to go. Let's see, we can go scale 120. 120, 130. That's the whole platter. Let's slice again. Take a look at the layers. There we go. So now we could probably drop it down. I need to find that sweet spot. So I'll do a binary search on that. So we said. So that was, what? let's drop it. Go 90. Slice. And then we'll look at the layers. Dude, the sweet spot. Nope. So we'll go 110. Yeah, we're right at that edge. So, uh, you know, this is the uh, Cape May Sport Fishing. You can get them here. Cape May, Cape May Sport Fishing right there. That's their page, right? So. Let's increase this. 110. Do a range and slice. All right. So now let's drop at 95. Slice and then layers. Dude, it's so close. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Hey, Rover, thanks for joining, bud. No, I'm going to go 105. All right, I'm calling that quits right there. And that's what we got. So then these layers just keep repeating, right? So that's all it is. Yep, that's all it is. So now we have that. We can export the G code. And then we'll get exported into Kate May Sport Fishing uh, folder. Let me switch camera here for a minute. And what am I doing? Oh yeah, need to load up their website. This will be Pruce's color change. All right, so we got that. All right, so now we got the G code here. That's this file. I want to drop this file. Nope, not that file, this file. All right, so what this lets me do is I have what's called a single extruder printer. It takes in filament. I have white loaded in there right now. It's Matter Hacker's build series filament. And I'm going to add two steps. And the first step is going to be 0 0.8 and the second. No, there's only going to be one step. That's it. Just one step. And then I'm going to download the G code. I got the G code. I got to rename this. I wish that their site um, 
change the name automatically, but it doesn't. All right, so we can move that over to here. Yes, I definitely want to do that. Um, I want to do it a little bit differently, though. Um, I want to take a photo from from their uh, page, right? So we got we got the photo on this page. I want to take one of these photos. Man, look at the fish that these guys get. I mean, that's crazy. I want to take one of their photos and then take the logo over top of that. Yo, hey, man. And um, then that's going to become the lithograph. And then, since I'm the LED guy, I want to make a box with LEDs. And that could be like their giveaway beyond what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to ship this to them for free. And uh, they, um, they'll give it out as a giveaway for their, uh, for their Facebook page. Hey, Sean. So, um, I'm the opening act, by the way, for tonight's Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout. If you don't know about Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout, you should. Let's see if we have a... Uh, this is public right here. A Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout. And tonight is Joe Mike Tadnella. He's hosting it. All right, we are offline. Let's connect. Let's see if we connect. And I want to load up this file. I want to go to KMA Sport Fishing and Colorize and G Code. Wait, we're having a tough time connecting. Oh, you know why? Because the printer's not on. Yeah. Turn the printer on. That was an ID 10T error. Let's clean these things off of the printer bed. Then I have to preheat PLA, move the axes. Filament is not happy. Oh boy, that is not twisted up. Because that would suck. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not twisted here. Because apparently the filament pulled out or broke off or something. And there's filament in there still right now. Let's uh, just put him through there right now. I'm just waiting for the um, the extruder to get up to temperature, and then I'm going to try to load the filament, which I'm not going to really load it. I'm just going to do this to make it. A, Push out whatever's in there. There we go. Uh oh. Okay, so now I'm loading the filament in. Looks like it's loading fine. It's going to be a big print. Let's 
So I'm going to leave that hang there because it's going to ooze a little bit. All right, so. Oh, yeah. So, um, Matt hit a. Matt, you hit a thousand K, right, the other day? And how's that, uh, that ice, uh, drone video doing? All right, let's connect again. Yeah, that's that's a good milestone hit. All right, three hours. So this is definitely going to be printing while that sucks. But hey, you know, we're going to be in the 3D printing hangouts tonight at 10 o'clock. Make sure you join us. Um, and I will be 3D printing. Johnny's downstairs making a making some hip-hop music with his friends. So there might be some banging that you hear. It's a sub subwoofer that's going off. All right, so I'm going to print this, then I'm going to switch to black filament. And this is going to take a while. So I think I'm ready. This is how small that stuff is when it extrudes. I'm going to have to print on that. This is good filament. It's a, it's definitely a very white uh, compared to the other cheap filament that I bought that uh, when you print once you can see through it, which I might use that filament for uh, lithophane only because it has a semi-translucent property. And I use the Bob Ross palette knife. I use it because it's not really sharp. I mean, it has an edge to it, but it's not something that'll like really dig. It can dig in because there is a semi-sharp edge, but it's it's pretty easy on that PEI. Let's see if we fit. Oh man. That is tight. So I was doing the skirt right now. Yep. Alright, so it did the skirt. Now it's doing the first uh, perimeter. This is the part that takes a while because it's got a. It's doing a 0.04 squished out a little bit. Uh, wide layer that then it has to connect all the dots and see if we can switch to a better um, a better view of the stream might have to make a new uh, a new scene for this let's duplicate this guy So here's a lesson in OBS. 3D design, 4K, and Octo Print Camera. Alright, so we'll do that. Oh, wrong. I wanted to duplicate. Let's right click duplicate. This is 3D designing 4K with Octo Print Camera. 
And then the octoprint camera is right there. I'm going to make that large. There we go. Right about where? That should be okay. So that should be what you guys are seeing right now, for the most part. And then I could turn off the display. So now you see a big old view. Yo, skewed view. I see all the knives and stuff you're creating, daggers, a lot of daggers. So I'm doing um doing a logo. This is a logo for Cape May Sport Fishing. I didn't create the logo, they did. Took their logo and um it's their their page, right? And I'm using that for um, 3D printing this but I had to go pretty large on this so that everything was connected and I'll show you what I mean when I was slicing this there's only this little tiny bit that's connected and when I had it it was like maybe I don't know 10 12 millimeter short on both sides so that's an inch half an inch on both sides of the bed too short there was a gap here so I had to make it the full width of the bed for this to fill in the alternative would have been for me to go into here and make that line a little bit thicker so hey they get a bigger uh, you get a bigger logo that's all and making this line bigger would have would have taken a lot of effort. It, it just would have been too much effort, and that's that's not where I want to spend my time. I want to spend my time creating the logo and all that. And this here, this this was definitely um, too small uh, for the extruder, so I would have to make a lot of changes to that because you can see that's a compound shape. I'd have to use a pathfinder to group everything together into one piece. So, what's everyone else working on tonight? Yeah, so this will, I, I think this will come out pretty good. I'll be switching filament uh, probably three quarters of the way through because the rest of this stuff is going to go very quickly. It doesn't have that much to fill in. So I think three quarters of the print time is going to be the first layer. And that's this first layer here. So. And that's a zero point zero point eight millimeter high. It's very crisp too. I think I think it'll come out that way when the three D prints it. I think the black on the white is going to look good. I think another alternative would be yellow on black, but I think when I do the yellow, I might have to do one layer of white just to help. Maybe I don't, but it it just might be required to give a little bit of background white to whatever lettering I do. Because I can switch the colors and I can make this whatever color I want and go from you know, whatever whatever good color combinations there are. Oh, really? You're at work, huh?
dual live streaming. <laughs> oh, that's good. Spartan Shield, there you go. We are Spartans. All right, so if you're new to 3D printing, um, the head is the extruder that's moving right now, and it it forces out a little bit of plastic through a heated end, which is called a hot end, and it follows this path. So each each one of these lines are where a little bit of plastic is deposited in line with the path that it shows. But where the order in which it does that is not clear here. It's a little clearer in Octoprint, uh, which is here. And right now, it's, it could end up jumping around and doing different areas. Uh, but eventually, and you can see it crisscrosses. So it does a layer in one way, and then it switches, and it does a layer in the other way, and that helps keep it a little bit stronger, because the weak part of the, the print is where the two layers meet side by side, so that's a weak part. So then if you have the layers orthogonal or close to orthogonal to one another, it helps with some rigidity. And then it starts working on this, and you can see it's all over the place. Why doesn't it optimize? I mean, look, it's going all over the place to do this. I, I guess, you know, it's really complicated software. So for me to question how it's doing that is crazy, because it's doing quite a bit. I could see writing the software is not, not easy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. Yeah, no, I saw that. That was awesome. Let's see if we can uh, bring that up. This is awesome. So, all right, first of all, we got a big, uh, big Millennium Falcon, right? So that's awesome. But then this right here, that is crisp. Out of high five, too. Dang! Nope. Let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, that is definitely awesome. I mean, look at that, the, the quality. So, it doesn't look like there's any supports in there at all. Just straight up printed, huh? That is cool. Anybody else got anything to share? Oh, i got to make you moderator. Can't do that there. Let's see. We'll look at here. All right, so now you're our moderator. Yeah, no supports. Yeah, that's that's sweet. Yeah, I definitely got to do that. Got to do it for uh, Valentine's Day. Which I, I mentioned that the last F3D PCH hangout. I'm like, hey, you know, we don't have that much time. Only got one more F3D PCH hangout before, uh, before it is. I got to do that. I mean, look at this. I got a huge mess back here. You know, it's like, all right, so there, you know, that's all just computer workspace, right? And that's pretty clear. That's a ceramic cat, by the way. My mom used to run ceramic classes. And so, 
This is all my electronic stuff because I am an electrical engineer by degree. Software engineer by career. Um, I just got to get my electronic stuff up and running again. And that's the thingy verse you just posted. So let's see that. Don't. I don't like that. I hate that. It's like, um, it's got to be a glitch. What was the name of it? Probably going to be nine thousand flowers on there. So why did that? That's YouTube doing something. YouTube is definitely doing something with that link. Cause you know what? Uh, so if you haven't done it already, there's a uh, a link. Let me post it. I need you to like my Facebook page if you get a chance. That's my Udoa Contracting Facebook page. So, do they tell you what settings to use? No supports. Resolution 0.2. Okay, that's typical. Infill 10%. Oh, not bad. How long did that take to print? Excuse you. Throw in, um, throw in your latest, uh, your latest print up there. Yeah, I definitely got to print these flowers. So was that uh, one one flower took that long? I mean, I can see why. It's quite a bit of detail. Yeah, the layers are looking good. You see a little bit of a Mori pattern in there. So which, I don't even know what I'm printing at. Let's switch camera. We'll go back to here. Uh, print settings. Where's the print speed at? Where do I find print speed? Oh, speed. Duh. Ah, okay. So, what speed do you print at, uh, Sean? You print slower. So if you print slower, you're printing slower than defaults, I assume. Because you know what? I've never touched any of these. I just left all this line. And, and I know I'm going to have to play with this when I start going with uh, printing the open RC tires. The other thing I have to print is... So by the way, if you didn't know this, if you're watching this for the first time, if you don't know what 3D printing is, let's take a look at uh, open RC. You can literally print your own um, RC cars, right? So, uh, Daniel Murray, he's over in Switzerland. He, uh, he created some of these models, and there's some variants on these models that, you know, you can do one-offs. 
and add your little uh, touch to it. So this is all 3D printed parts. Okay, 30 milliseconds. Yeah, so you're you're 25% slower. So anyway, this um, he's got a YouTube video up here. Let me see if we can play this without music. I still got to get the hardware for this so I can put all that together. So this car was 3D printed. And he's got a camera on it. And I have some of the uh, some of the parts that were I have some of the parts printed already. I have a lot more to go. Definitely have the body. So that's part of it right there. Let's switch the camera. Yeah, you better. You're coming out to Murph, right? Coming with the crew. So let's switch to here. Nope. Here. So this is uh, that's the one part. See that goes this way. Alright, so that's the back. And you got this part here. So I'm I'm part way there for for the body. Right? And then uh, let's see, where's the motor cover? These are the wheels. I just have to print the uh, the tires and the tires get printed this is all PLA that I printed with uh, but they have um, different types of plastics that you can print with you can print with nylon I also have carbon fiber that I still have to put in my I have a ruby nozzle that I still have to put in so that'll be another video another live stream when I do that Oh uh, yeah, I hear that. I ended up sponsoring um, Murph, so we get a table. Going to represent F3D PCH there for anybody who doesn't doesn't have a table. Yeah, TPU. So, so I have TPU. It's white TPU. I'd really like to have. Um, uh, black, but that's what they had at Micro Center at the time. So those settings, I'll be playing with the speed settings for sure. I have no knowledge about printing with TPU. Um, my understanding is there's some retraction settings I got to play with, but I'm really jealous of uh, Rover's position here because, like, when I got my printer, I knew nothing, and Rover's like. He's like been all over this for like the last couple of years, like looking up 3D printed stuff. So he's, you you have a printer now, right? Or is it still missing a component, Rover? I think you said you were missing something, or you're ready to go, or. Yeah, let's check. Check what we're doing. Yeah, see, this is why it's so slow because it's just doing this little tiny bit every time. I, you know what? I gotta fix the focus on my camera. That's probably something I gotta do in the Octoprint software. Which, guess what? Tonight, we're talking about Octoprint. I'm looking to. Uh, when I first installed Octoprint, I used the videos created by Joe Mike uh, to set up my Octoprint. He had a three videos, I think. And the first two videos I used right away, and I think the third one I played with a little bit, just watching to, to learn how to set it up. So, 
So you need a bunch of parts. Screws, springs, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, make a list of what the parts are. We'll uh, we'll put together a parts list, and we can set up a wish list. And then I I think uh, I think we can make that happen. Hey, John. Yeah, so we're we're talking about Octa tonight, John. Um, Joe Mike is like uh, he's on fire right now with what he's doing with the the little uh, device that he's selling on his 3D keys KC website. Yeah, so Rover, make sure you get a list to me. Put it, post it in Twitter, and we'll do a, a wish list. And we'll get a, we'll see what we can get to happen because you participate in so many of my live streams. Um, we got to give back a little bit. Make sure that happens. So if you're just joining, I'm working on a logo. This is a logo for Cape May Fishing. They have a Facebook page. Which that's their Facebook page, and I offer to create a logo for them that they could 3D print a logo, uh, two of them, and they can use them as giveaways to try to boost their presence on Facebook. And um, but then I got to thinking that I could take some one of their pictures, like randomly pick one of their pictures and um, do a lithophane from it. Why does that MVC FD91 sound so familiar? So like, like take, uh, take this picture here and then do a lithograph with it and emboss the um, the logo here right over top of the the photo that's used so you would see that clearly and then do something with the um... all right John uh, do something with LEDs to light up behind it yeah that's right that's why I, I knew that because that's what I had and John if you're still here you remember I had that camera you had the same camera I think the floppy disk camera yep and I found old photos, too, that I took with that camera. Like, real old photos. I had some... I was heavy into model trains. I did a lot of uh, model trains. Yeah, that's the one, John. Yeah. So I always took pictures of my model trains. and um, But I, I got away from it because I started doing other stuff. And then this is the model that I created in Fusion 360. Um, and that's what we're printing right now. And that's what's going to take nine years to print. So it'll probably take uh, probably eight hours total to print two logos. So... Okay, does that help? That's that's what I should do for the lithograph, right? That helps improve the resolution for the lithograph, is that what you mean? Yeah, I would hope I could get some of the original photos, because I imagine that they were taken with like a cell phone, so they're probably, uh, I'm going to say they're at least 1080, could be 4K if it's taken with a, a new one. Yeah, I got you. Yep, I'll make sure I do that. I got a whole list of things I got to do. And then I got to work on the marketing material for uh, for Murph because I want to make sure I have the stands 3D printed and everything with all the uh, the swag of all the stuff that I've created and then I'll have another tower of uh, stuff for Friday night 3D printer hangout. Is Matt, you still here? Country Cowboy.
So both, both uh, Murph and Earth. So it gets a little tricky when you do that. So if you want to apply an image to the, okay. So Matt, you're still here. Crap. Now what I was going to ask. Oh, um, so Matt, in our uh, private F3D PCH, you posted the logos. Do you have the AI file? Because that's what I'm going to need uh, of that logo that Mike created. Because I'm going to use that for generating uh, some of the, the material for, uh, for the table. Because rather than just have the table being just for me, right? Because it's stupid. Because it's a full 8-foot table or 6-foot table. I'll dedicate half of the space to... Uh, F3D PCH. You know, and I'm sure that you know everybody's retweeting and stuff this uh, F3D PCH thing, but I think um, I think there there's a chance that there's going to be some people who don't know that we meet every other Friday night, and we'll make sure we have it. Okay. Yeah, and I'd like to get some. Maybe we can get get some printer time from everybody to just print up a couple with the F3D PCH logo. So Matt, are you, uh, are you nailed down for going to Murph or you're still up in the air? That'd be good if you can go. I think you said you were going to try to leave on Friday night. Which is which is awesome because uh, you're what uh, you're like what nine hours away, ten hours away. I'm twelve hours away. Oh, I'm gonna order a stream deck, I think, and I gotta get the. So I got my system. I was talking to Preston today and. He said that um, I need 96 gigs of RAM for streaming and doing a lot of work, like After Effects and all that. So that's um, yeah, I hear you there too. Yeah, I've been pumping so much into into this venture you do it yeah so the things I want to do for Murph um, the RC car so I have to buy the the motor battery uh, ESC uh, charger and the uh, remote control receiver for the remote control. I used to work in the hobby business when I was in uh, high school. So I used to build RC cars and stuff. It's part of it. All right. That's good, man. That's, uh, that's getting there real early. Wow. Yeah, I think... Um, I think I'm, I'm definitely taking off that Friday. I think I'm going to leave on Thursday... And then we have a Matter Hackers uh, meetup, I think, on Saturday evening. I think that's when it's being scheduled, which will be cool. By the way, if you want to buy anything Matter Hackers, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. I'm happy with their filament. Uh, other filaments that I've used in the past have been, uh, we talked about this in... Uh, the either the last one or the one before the Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout talked about filaments and like the majority of my stuff is inland, but I also have Hatchbox, um, Esun. I have one Sane Smart. I have some Color Fab that I got when I was at Printed Solid.
Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, where are you at again, bro? Um, thought you were PA. Or am I mixing you? I might be mixing you up with Matt Haas. Hey, Noah Joshua. So, if anybody doesn't know Noah Joshua, uh, he's a youngster, he's got a YouTube channel, and he created a video on how to use calipers, which I thought was really awesome. That's got to give you some kudos with your science teacher. Definitely some kudos, because, I mean, who do you know at that age who's using calipers? There's, the numbers are higher than it would have been two years ago because more and more kids are getting in, into uh, 3D printing. Okay, yeah, you're you're close. So yeah, we got a good microbrewery near us. To, I think I tweeted it to you, Death of the Fox. Uh, there's one where I used to work at at Siemens. They, they have one at Iron Hill. That was, a, that was pretty good. And I think they created like three or four of them. AMZ 3D, haven't heard of them. 3D Salutech, Salu yeah, I haven't heard of that. No, Joshua, you know what? It's going to come, brother. We will definitely help you. I was doing the same thing you were doing, begging, pleading. All you got to do, just just follow this rule, MJ. Um, keep, keep pumping content out. Uh, along the way, you're going to discover what type of content you you like to produce. Um, you're going to discover your voice. You're going to discover your fan base. You know, you're going to have people that will gravitate towards you. Um, along that journey, it, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And if you do things right, uh, it'll it'll pop one day. But don't worry about the sub numbers really I mean it sounds it sounds silly now look at that right there John Christman just subscribed to you so don't focus on the sub numbers that's what I did in the beginning and that's about that's the goal right that you you think in the beginning but don't think that way you have to think of YouTube as it's a platform it's it's some place for you to get your message out to people literally worldwide who have access to the internet. It's it's a time that we're living in that you would be lucky if you could get a, a newspaper article or an article in a magazine for maybe somebody to read. But now, today, if you do it right across all three platforms, you know, you got the, um, you, you got to do that. You got to bring that to Murph. Um, you got to do Instagram, you got the Twitter, you know, you got to watch out. You got to make sure you, you work with your parents on that because it, um, there's some issues with Instagram and Twitter. You just got to make sure you, you manage that with your parents. Um, in other words, what I'm trying to say is there's some not so kid friendly things on Instagram and Twitter. Um, but you can manage that and grow your audience. And what I'm learning, I'm reading, um, I'm reading a book right now. And basically, what I've been doing all along is probably wrong. I need to switch it up a little bit. When I post on Instagram, I don't, I should not post the same thing on Twitter and the same thing on Facebook. They're separate mediums, and they all have to be done. And they, uh, hey, keep me sport fishing. We're printing the, uh, the logo. That's awesome. Thanks for, uh, joining in. So that's the, uh, that's the logo that I'm working on. And one other thing I want to do is, um, take, let's see if I can find the page. I want to take one of these photos. We should really, like, if you guys want, it's up to you. Uh, have a contest of what photo you want to pick. And I could do a lithograph. And the idea of lithograph, if you don't know what that is, it's something where 
the 3D printing prints more material in an area that's darker and less material in an area that's lighter. And then behind it is a um, is a light, and you see th through it, and it looks like a photo. So I would do that in like a uh, white. Oh, no connection. It's up a bit. Go down. Looks like we're okay. So anyway, the lithograph. I don't know if I have the lithograph on here. Check your network connection. Okay, so there's the lithophane. Yeah. So Rover, can you do me another favor and post a uh, post an example of a lithograph? video or photo maybe from instagram or something um i think we could we could make a cool thing so i'm like the led guy right i do a lot of things leds i'll see if i can show you my uh, instagram here so there's one of the led things i did all right, so that's for a, a local company in Gibstown here. They, all that's good. So they have a production studio. I was asked to build a table for them, so I did that. Uh, we also did, all right, that's, they use LEDs everywhere. And then the last thing I want to show you is uh, my son's music studio, right? So that's my son's music studio. So I do everything LEDs. I think that we can incorporate LEDs in a lithophane uh, for a giveaway. You know, and you just use that on your channel and your Facebook page and use that as a giveaway. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, I like that a lot. That was that was cool. So yeah, it it, it turned out pretty good. I just wish that I used a flat paint instead of um, instead of gloss. Yeah, so that's the lithophane video. All right, so let me bring that up in the chat. Then let's see where we at now. Oh, I'm showing this stuff. I'm not even showing my screen. I'm talking about this stuff, and I'm not even showing my screen. So that was a screen fail. All right, so anyway, I'm the LED guy. So here's some examples, right? That's down in Wildwood, right? So back to the table. So this is the table that I created. It's a table I created for the production company. Let's see, are we caught up now? Yes. So, LEDs, anything with LEDs, I do everything with LEDs. Right, and then we even have our LEDs in our media room set to green. And then, uh, this is the music studio right here. Right? So, and we can set the the root, the strip lighting to a different um, to a different color, and the lights to a different color. So, I'm the LED guy. So that's why I think we can do some cool stuff with LEDs for your uh, giveaway. So, there we go. And then that's printed with red cord. That's some awesome stuff. What was the name of that filament? Why am I purple haze? Good stuff. Oh yeah, so let me get back to dashboard here and we'll bring this up. Yep, there you go. So that's a lithophane, right? So I think we can easily incorporate that. Get a do the the logo right over top. 
and uh, and do the the photograph right behind it. And we can do it in a circle, and then I can make a box and have the circle cut out of that. I think that would work out. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Rover. And then let's see this one. That's the same one, right? Same one. All right, but this one was a search. Okay. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, the lithophane globe. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Yeah, remove. So make it black and white. Grayscale, whatever. Grayscale. Not black and white. Yeah, I like his. I like his RC life on. Good channel. Hey, thanks for joining, Tony. So, do you say do you say uh, Demilio or do you say Demeglio? I know uh, when I was in uh, when I was in Italy, they wouldn't say De Stefano. You know, it's my name backwards, unaffected. They would say uh, Di Stefano. So, a little different. You a member of Sons of Italy? I mean, we're we're a member of um, the local Sons of Italy here, Cormos Marina and Paulsboro. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for joining, guys. So anyway, what I what I'm saying, Tony, I want to catch you up to speed on one of my proposals. Um, so this is lithophane. And this is three D printed, right? So. This was printed by another creator and there's a website where you just take a photo and you drop it in and it automatically creates the the printed portion okay so that's how you say it and um what i'm thinking is that we could take one of the photos you know maybe have a contest or something uh, you guys decide how you want to do that like what what photo you want to choose and then I'll run that through the lithophane, but first emboss the logo right over top uh, of the lithophane. So it'll have the Cape May Sport Fishing uh, logo in black over top of it. So that's the darkest part of the uh, lithophane. Uh, I would, I can go square. Uh, so I would do it the whole width of the bed. And the width of the bed is 210 millimeters, I think. Since it's going to be square, right? I mean, I could go rectangle and place it on its side and go 240 by 210. But I think it would be fine going. And then, like I was saying, I'm the LED guy. So I do a lot of LED stuff. So this is my son's music studio. And then, let's see, I built a table for a local film production company in Gibstown, and that's the table. So, like, I do everything like LED, so I'm thinking we can incorporate LEDs into this thing that we can do, and you can do it as a giveaway, trying to boost your, uh, boost your numbers on your Facebook. I think it would be cool. And then you're picking... You're picking photos from everybody who submits it, so you can launch that as a campaign that, hey, you know, submit your photos to the Cape May sport fishing because we're going to 3D print this thing in lithophane with LEDs. Oh, and then one other thing I did, I'll show you this. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go to my channel. Right, and I did this. this so this is um, all out baseball. They're they're nationwide, but we have a local chapter here in uh, in East Greenwich. 
and that, that's my sister. Um, and I made this sign, right, so it's more level. And let's see, let me skip a part, skip ahead to where I was creating it. A little slow right now because I'm trying to read and write on the internet at the same time. So this is the first level, the sign, and then I basically it's embossed, you know, and I'm just finishing the painting there. And then I have the next layer. Uh, let's see, I check this one. So that's the next level, and then I start working on the LEDs at some point. And uh, you know, they change color and stuff. So you can have a... And I left, instead of trying to sand that down and make it look perfect, I thought it added some... That's just the, the brush strokes that's on there. Uh, there's little, little marks are just the brush strokes. So that's the uh, that's a sign. So yeah, that's that's my thing. LEDs. But I'm a maker. I do I do I make everything. So yeah, that's a big fish. But anyway, um, this is Kate May Sport Fishing. So you know if you like fishing, like their page. And then let's see. I have a link here. This is my you do it contracting. You get a chance. And that's a, my my Facebook page. Looks like there was some extruding problems. You can see a definite a definite pattern in there. Let me switch camera. This is Octoprint. You can see that pattern in there. Um, I don't know if anybody knows what that's from. Could be an extrusion problem. Could be a temperature prop. Could be temperature crap. I forgot to set the temperature to sixty degrees. I hope I don't have this thing lift up on me. So I have a question. Can I set defaults that every time I load up? Um, Slicer, it loads up with my default, so I don't have to change them. Because I do not want to have to keep changing this uh, this setting of 60 degrees. Where is. I have such a tough time finding this. Layers and parameters. Filament settings. It should be here. Oh, yeah, filament. So it's set to 55, it meant to set that to 60. So I want to set it to 60 and I want it to always remember that setting. But every time I load the software, it loads up with 55. So I didn't bother looking up on how to do that. But if you guys have a tip on how to do that, I'm not even showing the right screen. Again, stream fail. So again, slicer settings. I want that to always load with 60. Every time I load the software, I have to type in 55. So that's annoying. And we're gonna load up soon. I should be loading in soon to Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout. So I'll be ending the stream shortly. So if you don't know, we have a Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout. This is our uh, um, this is the link to see uh, let's open that now and I'll paste that into let's share this link this way copy and we'll go over here nope not there here and we'll paste it in there and that's the link to Joe Mike Taranello's um, page his uh, his video where he's going to live stream from so because I participate in that I have to join 
their session earlier so that we get everything established. I got to get my microphone, not this microphone, but I got to get my headset, which this is my headset that I wear because it's only you guys that I don't need to worry about it, but that's my headset that I wear. It keeps all the uh, all audio. You set a profile, okay, but you're using Cure, so I'm using Slicer. And you're saying Rover that I got to use the lithophane positive image settings image. Okay, I got to remember that. All right, this is awesome. Good stuff. Thanks guys for joining. This is a that's a good night. Getting the logo printed, and what's cool is that I'm going to be in the Friday Night 3D Printer Hangout while this is printed. And that print, that print is literally all the way to the edge of the bed. And then in the beginning, uh, Tony, I have, um, you can watch the, the beginning how I import the logo into Fusion 360. So let me turn off the body. I'll turn on the sketch. So I imported the logo. I didn't make any changes, but I had to remove the like on Facebook stuff because that was too small uh, to finish it. And then I modeled like I would pick an item. So I picked this item here. Yeah, I'm going to switch over there in a minute, Matt. So I picked that and I extruded that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that, John. And then, um, so I extruded that part. You can see that's a different layer, right? So I extruded that 0 0.8 millimeters. Because I did the Eagles logo. Let's see, where's the logo at? So let me switch camera here. So I did this Eagles logo. Uh, that is five separate layers. And that was done at point one. I'm sorry, one millimeter each layer. And I'm thinking I could get away with four layers, which is 0 0.8 millimeters. Because each layer is, uh, uh, each layer is 0 0.2 millimeters. So four layers is 0 0.8. And so this is on the second layer right now. So the first layer is technically not 0 0.8. Um, 0.2 millimeters because it's squished a little bit more. Use a live Z, which is just um, it's adjusting the head position to the bed. It squishes it just a little bit to help guarantee that it sticks to the bed, so you don't have any liftage. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks for joining in, Tony. All right, everyone, so I'm going to end this stream now because I have to switch over. And, uh, yeah, what's funny is uh, Rover doesn't even have a printer yet, and he's, like, way further ahead than I was when I first started. When I first got my printer, I didn't even know what a slicer was. So I know I've uh, I been uh, John Christmas a year, like, constantly at work. And fortunately, he's, uh, he's willing to give up all his knowledge and help me out. So I'm going to end this stream. You'll catch me over at the other stream where I linked. Uh, here. Yep, I linked, I pasted it right there. So that's that link up above a little bit. Okay, and then you want to see. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. So you're going to go over, you're going to tell me over there. Yep. And I'll be I'll be joining there in a minute. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk. So uh, Tony, uh, we we live down in Wildwood during the summer, so that's that's where uh, that's where we'll be. And I'm uh, I'm down there 
all the time in the summer. All right, end of the stream. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you. Oh, okay. So I worked. In, I was close to the the printing business. I worked for an author. And we did a lot of book publishing. And we had to deal with the layout and stuff. My mother worked for the author for thirty years. Yeah, and and Jay, you're gonna do fine. You just have to don't stop. And you're gonna get tips from everybody along the way. But one person I want you to watch, NJ, is Roberta Blake. So I'm gonna type this name in here. Roberto Blake. He's who you want to watch. He's got a lot of videos, a lot of content. You want to watch him, right? You're learning how to do stuff. That's that's what you want to do. All right. And in the stream now, I got to end the stream because I got to move over. So uh, thanks, everyone. It's been a good night. See you in 30 minutes.